In this session, we're going to get into the basics of vector illustration or vector work in Corel Drawing. You can see we've got the Mustang football logo here in our workspace or set up on our page. And as I said before, there's a free tutorial that covers the entire project on the advancedtshirts.com website. That tutorial, interestingly, was actually featured in Computer Graphics Magazine about two years ago because of the techniques that I used. They were seen on the site by the magazine and they contacted me and wanted me to write a tutorial for that graphic. So you'll find this Mustang graphic both on my site and there's a written tutorial at the Computer Graphics Magazine website. Now, what is this illustration? We've talked about it in other sessions and we know that this illustration is comprised of a number of vector objects. If I go ahead and lasso it, we'll see that it's actually 24 vector objects. If we go to View and Wireframe, we'll see that these vector objects are actually compiled. They're set up next to each other, around each other, some in front, some in back. We go to View and Enhanced again, and we'll take a look at this particular blue object here, which is the object I use to hide the text in the Mustang text behind the head object here. If I move this, you'll see, now you can see the text coming into the mouse. So this was a contour that was then stretched out, and I'll just hit Control z a couple times to put that back. And that creates the outline of my mouth object, something to hide my text behind. Now, I could have converted all this to other vector objects, and then cut it out or clipped it or whatever. Different approaches to vector, you'll get your own personal style as you start working with the application. But what you want to realize is that all of these shapes are just set up in order and next to each other to create the whole graphic. We want to be thinking about that as we move forward. Number of objects used to create our vector objects. Now there's a simple tool in CorelDRAW that I want to get started with and that's actually the Bezier tool. Now the Bezier tool is my go-to tool for vector drawing if I have to actually create something custom. So let's take a look at that and we'll get into lines and nodes and working with the Bezier tool. To start with the Bezier tool, we'll come down four from our pick tool and we'll have a rollout here. We've got a freehand tool, pen tool, etc., artistic media tool. But in this introduction, we're just going to work with the Bezier tool. I'm going to lay down a node. To lay down a node with the Bezier tool, once I've got it selected, left click on it on the toolbox, it's selected. Then come down left click one time in my workspace and release. Now I can move this cursor anywhere in my workspace and I'll lay down another node. And what will happen is, is that I'll have a line segment attached between those two nodes. Now, this is a line segment with a straight line. If I go and lay down another node, but this time instead of left click and release, I'm going to left click, hold down and pull. So I'll left click, hold down and pull. And you notice the control arms that we covered in an earlier session start to appear. So now I've got two line segments and three nodes I've created with the Bezier tool. Now if I create another node, and this will be my fourth node, left click, hold down, you'll see that I now have a symmetrical node with a line segment set up the same as here. Now, if I left click one time, I'm going to, excuse me, not one time, double left click on this node with the Bezier tool, I'll convert this back to a cusp. So I won't have a symmetrical node and then I can start to come over here and pull and illustrate again. And now I've got a point here on this node. So with our Bezier tool, we can create an, our lines and node segments on the fly and we can edit them as we go. Now with the pen tool I really don't like to work with that because there's a couple of different features or functions in the Bezier tool that we're going to get into here. There's a setting in our options and this is the first time we'll see our options dialog that relates to this Bezier tool that I want to set up and it also relates to our shapes when we're working with those also. And it's called enable node tracking. I want to go to tools and options and I'm going to come into display. So I'll go to workspace, I'll click on display, and there's a checkbox here for enable node tracking. Now, it's set off as a default. That's because it has issues with snapping, but I don't use snapping. I like to align my objects manually using C and E and the alignment objects in CorelDRAW. I just don't have the freedom to move objects around as freely as I'd like to with the snapping on because snapping always wants to pull my objects to snap into a line with other objects. Now, some people like to use snapping, I don't like to use snapping. So I'm going to deselect all and select OK. Now, if I go back to my Bezier tool and I click on this node here, 
and go back across my line segments, you'll see that as I go across the nodes, my Bezier tool will automatically convert back to, it's not to, but to a pick tool, to the pick tool. Then I can go and edit these lines and nodes live while I'm working with my Bezier tool. I can come over here and click on this line segment and move that. And then if I just click off one time, I go back to my Bezier tool. Now here's what's cool. Left click, hold down, start pulling, and I'm continuing to draw my line with the Bezier tool. So let's say I want to illustrate something like a simple flame graphic. I'll go ahead and delete this with my Bezier tool. Simply create a node. And what I'll do, because I'm going to create a, faint, a flame graphic, I'm going to left click, hold down, and move. I'm not going to just click one time. Then I'm going to come down here, create another, and I'll just go ahead and start creating a curve here create the same thing down here at the bottom and let's say for the sake of our flame graphic I'm going to double click here convert this to a curve then I'll come up here and I'll start to left click pull and I can edit my vector line segments and nodes on the fly as I illustrate in vector I'll double click here come down here and start to create this now if I make a mistake or something's not exactly the way I want it I can automatically hover over a node and start to edit that or change that. Let's say I wanted to bring this curve over this way a little bit and I can also grab these control handles and my line segments and edit on the fly. Now if I click off I'll go back to my Bezier tool, double click here to convert this to a cusp, then come back up here in this way and then let's say I wanted to come here this way, left click, hold down, pull that way. Now I've got my segments set up so that I can automatically edit them as I draw. Now this might be part of a flame graphic. If I didn't like this I might want to bring this up here and then start to edit this way. And I'm automatically in my pick tool so I've saved myself the time of going and grabbing the pick tool and going back and forth in my workspace. Now another thing that happens with this particular tool you'll notice that if I create an object or a shape, excuse me, I'm going to create a rectangle here, I convert to the pick tool automatically which would happen anyway because this is a shape but if I right click and convert this to a curve and I go with my pick tool you'll notice that if I hover over any node here I can left click and now I can start to go to my shape tool and edit the nodes in this shape because it's automatically going to convert when I hover now as I said there's some issues with snapping so if you want to run with snapping you might have some issues with this but we can see that having this, in the, this no, enable node tracking set on it's going to save us a lot of time when we're working with our vector objects and illustrating with the Bezier tool and working with our shapes. So we've covered enable node tracking and the Bezier tool in this session and in the next session we'll get into some other things.